I was 19 years old when my father passed away. He, uh, it was a Wednesday, February 13th, 1991, Ash Wednesday. And he, uh, my mother came home that night and I heard footsteps behind her thinking it was more than two people. I thought it was her and my father. And it was my aunt and uncle and, and I heard my mother crying and I said, oh shit, you know, this is not good. And, uh, and, and, and we got the news that, uh, that it was a massive heart attack. Uh, my father scavenged the um, scrap yards uh, in Brooklyn. He also had uh, favorite uh, scrap yards in New Jersey as well, where uh, Blewett Scrap Yard in Howell was one of the places he loved to go. Um, when he went into the junkyard or scrap yard, he felt like it was Christmas time for him. And when he came out, he was like a pirate, you know, so just. He, the things that he would find, he would say, look at this, you know, what the, you know, and we would all be like, yeah, that's great, you know, but what, you know, what are you going to do with it? We couldn't see what, we, what he was going to do with that piece of metal. And once he started cutting it on the bandsaw, you know, once he started shaping it, it was incredible. This, this hunk of metal would be cut into six different pieces that were just beautiful pieces that he would put into his sculptures. He would find a buoy, a sea buoy. Um, how he got them, how he acquired them was uh, he would actually go up to people's front doors and just say, hey, listen, you know, there's be a lawn ornament or something, a buoy on their, on their lawn. He'd say, listen, can I, um, would you be interested in selling that? And so a lot of the times the people would say yes, because he would give them, you know, more money than they paid for it. But anyway, he would take the, the sea buoy and he would cut it in half and he would make uh, two hemispheres out of this and he would uh, cut the metal on his bandsaw, shape the metal, you know, by hammering it out on his anvil. And, and then you'd have to put the one top on, you know, top of it on the other. So he kind of did that by eyes. You know, once it became a whole sphere and he placed the one half on the other, he would have to make sure that the, that the uh, circumference of the, of the sphere was welded so that, you know, it was perfectly round and you couldn't see the, the welds. And how he did that was he welded from the inside out. Even the even the MIG TIG welders of today, and and, and you know they, they don't, you know these these guys don't know how he did it. His his welds are seamless, and it's not easy to weld. But you know to beat a line is not an easy thing to do, and uh, he he just made it look effortless. short my dad he was like five eight and he had a weight lifters build you know because he was just always hammering and, and you know he had forearms that looked like Popeyes you know because he was just he was always blacksmithing and uh, you know or, or, or moving a sculpture and, and uh, he didn't go to the gym believe me but he looked like he was you know he was Hercules he wasn't a wine and cheese guy he wasn't a he didn't care. He just wanted to make art.
thing I remember most about my father was that he, not only was he tough, but he was gentle. And he always said to be tough is to be, to be tough is one thing, but to be fragile is to be truly fierce. And he was both. And that's, that's kind of hard to be because, you know, you think of an artist, excuse me, as somebody who is, is maybe more fragile than tough. I mean, if, if you were to uh, generalize, uh, again, he wasn't a wine and cheese guy. He was just, he was a tough dude, a regular guy. And that's what people liked about him the most, I think. Well, I hope you enjoyed this short video. I've been friends with the Malpass family for about 25 years. Unfortunately, I never met the artist Michael Malpass. I've been friends with his son, Michael, and his son wrote this book about his dad. Uh, Michael was just an amazing artist and a fantastic sculptor and a worker. And I think that's why I like his work so much. And I think anybody who is a woodworker or a metal worker will appreciate the artwork of Ma Michael Malpass because it just can't be denied the energy that went into it and the skill that it took to create them. Uh, the title of this book, Humdinger, that comes from a phrase that uh, Michael's dad would say when he found a piece of metal that was perfect for one of his sculptures. He might find a piece of metal in the scrapyard and just pick it up and say, wow, this is a humdinger. And that just meant like the best of everything. And he might take that piece of metal and cut it into pieces on the bandsaw or forge it on his anvil and make it fit the sphere. So just the whole process I find um, really interesting and impressive. And I wanted to make this short video to introduce more people to the artwork of Michael Malpass. If you're looking for a good art book to add to your collection, I'll have a link to this one in the description below. I find it really inspiring because it's just a reminder that anything worth doing takes time. And when you look at these sculptures, you know that they didn't happen in, in a day. You know, they took some time, they took some real stick to itiveness. So, uh, again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time.